Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about rank nullity theorem for matrices, one of the very important result in linear algebra. Now there is rank nullity theorem for linear transformations as well. Well, it's not that different, it's almost the same, but as if now I won't use the word linear transformation, I will only play with the matrices. Okay, so it says that if you have a matrix of order m cross n, then the number of columns, what is your n? Number of columns for the matrix is equal to rank of a matrix plus the nullity of a matrix. So this theorem connects three things. It connects the number of columns of a matrix to equal to rank of a matrix and nullity of a matrix. Now rank of a matrix I have already talked in my earlier lecture, link you can find in the description for the detailed explanation. But here for the sake of completeness, let me just recall what do you mean by rank of a matrix. So what is rank? It is nothing but once you have a matrix, you just see the maximum number of linearly independent rows or the maximum number of linearly independent columns. Okay, both the numbers are same, either you look for maximum number of linearly independent rows or maximum number of linearly independent columns. Both are same and this number is called as the rank of a matrix. And how do you find the rank? You simply do the row operations. Once you do the row operations and you reduce your matrix into the row echelon form or reduced echelon form and in that reduced echelon form or the echelon form, you just see the number of non-zero rows. Then that is nothing but the rank of a matrix. So that's how you find the rank of a matrix with the help of the row operations. You can use column operations as well, so it's fine. So this is what you mean by rank. Now what is nullity? Now let us spend a couple of minutes on nullity of a matrix. Okay. So nullity of a matrix is also a number. Now for that, one should know the concept of null space of a matrix. One should know the concept of null space or some people also called as a solution space. Okay, so it is all those vectors in Rn, n dimensional space, such that your a into x bar is zero. Okay, remember my a is a matrix of order m cross n. So this n is this. It's obvious, right? Because this is matrix of order m cross n. So this multiplication to make sense, this has to be n cross one. Therefore, my x bar is in Rn. So you look those vectors in Rn, which is which satisfies this condition. That means all those vectors x bar such that a into x bar is zero. So null space is nothing but it is the solution space to the system of linear equations. Which system? The system you get after expanding expanding this a into x bar. Okay. So solution of this system is nothing but the null space. Now, why do we call null space? Why not null set or the solution set? Well, the reason for calling it as a space because this collection forms a subspace of Rn because I'm taking the vectors from Rn. So this is a subset of Rn, obviously, but this forms a subspace. Now, how do you check whether some subset is a subspace or not? You see three things. What is the first thing? Non-empty. That means whether the zero bar belongs to, let me call this as N. So does zero bar belongs to n? Yes. Why? Because a into zero bar is zero only. Okay. So therefore zero bar is in this set. Okay. If you take u bar comma v bar belongs to n. Now u bar is in n means what? Your a into u bar is zero. Your v bar is in n means what? a into v bar is zero. Now what can you say about a into u bar plus v bar? It is a into u bar plus a into v bar. But a into u bar is 0, a into v bar is 0, so their addition is 0. So u plus v is also the solution to the system ax equal to 0. Therefore, u bar plus v bar belongs to n. Right? And what is the third condition? If u bar is in n and you take alpha to be real number, then what you want to prove? You want to prove alpha into u bar is in n right so what is a into alpha u bar but alpha is a number it's a scalar so it comes outside which is alpha into a u bar but what is a into u bar 
it is zero bar why because my u bar is in end okay and what is this this is zero bar so this collection forms a subspace and therefore instead of calling it as a null set we call it as a null space or the solution space and now as soon as you have something to be a subspace or a vector space the obvious thing is you find the basis because for every vector space the basis exists so you find the basis and once you have the basis you count the number of basis vector that is nothing but the dimension of the null space and the dimension of null space is nothing but the nullity of a matrix okay so to find the nullity of a matrix you should solve this ax bar equal to 0 you see how many vectors are there in the basis and that number of basis elements is nothing but the nullity of a matrix that is one way another i have seen few authors also say like you try to solve this ax bar equal to 0 and when you solve this system you just count the number of free variables at the end so number of free variables is nothing but the nullity but i like to say in the language of basis because that's a good standardized way okay so yeah so now you know the nullity you know the rank and n is the number of columns okay now let us go for some examples so like for simple objective kind of examples you may see an example like this so they will give you a matrix a is equal to this and they will ask you nullity of a matrix now they should not take more than 10 seconds okay why so because see what is the order of the matrix this is nothing but 3 cross 4 so number of columns is 4 4 is equal to rank of a matrix plus nullity of a matrix now see this is already in the reduced form so no need to apply the row operations right because this is the leading entry all the entries below the leading are 0 in the second row this is the leading entry all the entries below the leading are 0 good there is no zero in, non zero entry so this is already in the reduced form okay this is already in the echelon form okay so no need to apply the row operations directly you can see the rank of the matrix is 2 because you have two non zero rows okay and therefore nullity has to be 2 okay so such kind of exams can come in competitive exams as well okay so or in your final exams as well so this should not take that much of time provided you know the rank nullity theorem otherwise what you will do you will do a into x bar equal to 0 you take x bar as x1 x2 x3 x4 you multiply you see that okay there are two vectors therefore the nullity is 2 you will get answer by that way as well but that is time consuming okay so now let us go for another example now this was another question asked in one of the competitive exam so you have a matrix of order 8 cross 5 8 rows 5 column and the null space is spanned by these two vectors question is what is the rank of a matrix okay so even without knowing the matrix simply by knowing this phi u and this basis you can tell me what can be the rank of a matrix okay so number of columns are phi u number of columns is equal to rank plus nullity what is nullity it is the dimension of the null space what is the dimension of null space it is the number of basis vector are they independent yes they are independent okay so therefore this is the dimension is 2 therefore the nullity is 2 and therefore your rank has to be 3 so yeah so this such kind of competitive such kind of questions do come in competitive competitive exams or even for objective questions for theory type of questions they may ask you like they will give you a matrix and the question will be like verify rank nullity theorem so verify means what you need to find rank you need to find nullity you add them up that should be equal to the number of columns okay so here your number of columns is nothing but four now the next thing is you want to find the rank how do you find the rank of a matrix you do the row operations what i will do i will do r2 will change to i am operating on second row so i will do r2 minus 5 r1 and r3 minus 7 r1 it's always good habit to write down on which row you are doing the operation it's a good habit okay so what do you get here you have 1 2 3 4 here you have 0 0 what is this 7 minus 10 7 minus 10 is minus 3 2 minus 15 is minus 13 1 minus 20 is minus 20 11 minus 14 
इलेवन माइनस फोर्टीन इज माइनस थ्री राइट एट माइनस ट्वेंटी वन इज माइनस थर्टीन एंड नाइन माइनस ट्वेंटी एट नाइन माइनस ट्वेंटी एट इज माइनस नाइनटी एंड नाव यू डू आर थ्री माइनस आर टू सो ऑल दिस विल बिकम जीरो सो जीरो 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 नाउ दिस इज इन एच एल ऑन फॉर्म दिस इज अ नॉन जीरो एंट्री ऑल द एंट्रीज आर जीरो दिस इज द नॉन जीरो एंट्री ऑल द एंट्रीज आर जीरो here there is no non zero entry cool so this is it in the echelon form how many non zero rows are there two therefore the rank of the matrix is two okay so we found the rank now i want to find the nullity okay so how will you find the nullity you will do a into x bar equal to 0 you do a into x bar equal to 0 but instead of writing the a matrix you can also play with this echelon matrix right because solving ax bar equal to 0 is same as to solve this b what is my b matrix the equivalent matrix okay so this into 0 bar okay so this is 0 0 0 0 0 1 2 3 4 here it was -3 -19 and i think -14 i am not sure Ah, I erase this, but okay, let it be. It is something number. Let me call it as minus fourteen. So this is what I have. Okay, now if I solve, the, what is this? This is x one plus two x two plus three x three plus four x four equal to zero, and minus three x two minus fourteen x three minus nineteen x four equal to zero. So from this, what you can see, your x two is nothing but Minus fourteen by three x three, minus nineteen by three x four. Now we put the value of x two over here. So again, your x one will also be in terms of x three and x four. So your x two is in terms of x three x four. Your x one is in terms of x three x four. Okay. So how many free variables are there? Two, x three and x four. Because once I have x three and x four, I can tell x two. And as soon as I know x two, I can tell x one as well. So ultimately, I should know x3 and x4. Therefore, x3 and x4 are your free variables, and therefore your nullity is two. So rank was two, nullity is two. Two plus two is four, which is same as the number of columns. So that, that's how you verify. But then you should also know how to find the basis. To find the basis vectors, you plug in the value. So what you have x1 plus two times this. Okay, so which is minus sign. So minus twenty-eight by three x three minus thirty-eight by three x four plus three x three plus four x four equal to zero. Fine. And now you find your x one. So what is your x one? It is nothing but this is x three and this is x three. Three three is a nine. So minus twenty it is nothing but nineteen. So this is equal to nineteen by three x three. And twelve, so this is twenty-six by three x four, provided my calculations are correct. So this is what you have. So what do you get? So therefore, your x bar is nothing but x one, which is nineteen by three x three plus twenty-six by three x four. This is minus fourteen by three x three minus nineteen by three x four x three and x four. So this is what your x bar is. And if you take out x three outside, nineteen by three minus fourteen by three one zero plus x four twenty six by three minus nineteen by three zero one. So therefore, your solution space is a linear combination of these two vectors, and these two are independent. Therefore, the dimension is two. Okay, so your null space for this matrix is the span of this vector and this vector, and nullity is two. Okay, so this is how one can take help of rank nullity theorem to answer various questions. So I hope this is clear. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.